Thank you all for joining. I am pleased to report another strong execution quarter as we posted Q2 revenue of 108 million above the high end of the guidance provided on our Q1 call. Notably, Q2 is our first $100 million quarter, uh, another major milestone in the company's 15 year history. And according to Bloomberg NEF, combustion vehicle sales peaked in 2017. And as we've said before and proven in historic attach rates, our growth closely tracks the arrival rate of vehicles. As consumer em consumers embrace the transition to EVs at an accelerating rate, the future of this business is incredibly strong. Year-over-year -year revenue growth of 93% and sequential revenue growth of 33% continue to demonstrate the company's strength across verticals and geographies. We've improved gross margin from Q1 and realized the operating leverage as forecasted. The category continues to be affected by supply chain dislocation. As we covered in recent earnings calls, we continue to pr prioritize assurance of supply to support our land and expand strategy and strong upward growth trajectory. This means higher purchase price variances on source components and excess logistics costs. Despite the headwinds, our operations team worked tirelessly to deliver 19% non-GAAP gross margin in the second quarter, up two percentage points sequentially, while achieving impressive growth. Net, we are quite pleased with our performance in Q2, and Rex will provide more color on that in our outlook for the rest of the year. Our install base of network ports grew to approximately 200,000, a year-over-year -year increase of 70%, and sequential increase of 7%. Of those, over 60,000 are in Europe, and over 15,000 are DC fast. And I'll remind you that ports under management is one way to track our progress in our commercial and fleet verticals, as each of these ports generates an annual software subscription. As a reminder, we do not include home chargers for single family residences in this count, where we also continue to see strong demand. Complementing this, our roaming reach is now over 355,000 ports in North America and Europe. New customers in the quarter contributed approximately one third of our Q2 billings, and we now count 80% of the 2021 Fortune 50 as customers and 53% of the 2021 Fortune 500 as customers. On our first quarter call, we discussed ramping manufacturing of new fleet and commercial AC and DC charging platforms. Customers are telling us that our solutions are meaningfully differentiated and comprehensive. Additionally, our customers rely on us for everything from upfront consultation and planning through build out and ultimately continued optimization of the infrastructure. Turning now to verticals. Commercial, which lagged from a rate of growth perspective during the pandemic, accelerated in the quarter with the global business up 83% year over year and 45% sequentially. Regarding our partnership with Volvo and Starbucks, the first site went live in the quarter, an important step in reinventing the road trip. The commercial vertical in Europe was particularly strong with billings up over 300% year over year and 24% sequentially. Fleet continues its growth with strong demand for management software combined with our AC and DC charging solutions that balance charging costs with operational readiness for light to heavy duty vehicles across depot, en route and take home charging. In Q2, fleet billings grew 135% year over year and 23% sequentially following a strong first quarter. The vertical continues to be vehicle limited. Residential demand remains remarkably strong. Billings for residential were up over 125% from the second quarter of last year and a sequential increase of 11% uh, for, uh, versus the first quarter. The growth would have been significantly higher if not for supply chain constraints. In turning the policy, our business model sets us up well to operationalize the US National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program Additionally, the Inflation Reduction Act was signed shortly after the close of the quarter, which includes stimulus for both vehicles and infrastructure across passenger and fleet categories. Our policy team remains engaged with federal and state agencies to help shape programs to ensure a healthy and self-sufficient charging industry. As discussed previously, we do not include these federal programs in our guidance or long-term views of turning cash flow positive. We have long said, that what is good for business can be good for the planet too. Our network has fueled over 4.4 billion electric miles to date. And we estimate these drivers have avoided over 178 million cumulative gallons of gasoline and over 800,000 metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions. Now I'll turn this over to Rex to discuss financials. Rex, over to you. Thanks, Pasquale, and good afternoon, everyone. 
A quick reminder, as in previous calls, my comments are non-GAAP, where we principally exclude stock-based compensation, amortization of intangible assets, and non-recurring costs related to restructuring and acquisitions. Please see our earnings release for non-GAAP to GAAP reconciliations. For Q2, revenue was $108 million, up 93% year-on-year and 33% sequentially, above our previously announced guidance range of 96 to 106 million. As we have for multiple quarters running, we fundamentally shift what we could build. All verticals were strong from a demand standpoint with a healthy and welcome uptick in commercial AC business, but supply constraints across all products persisted. As before, strong demand and supply constraints translated into higher backlog. Though we worked down a meaningful percentage of our existing backlog during the quarter, our ending backlog grew 26% sequentially from Q1. Network charging systems at 84 million with 78% of Q2 revenue, up 106% year on year and 41% sequentially. Subscription revenue at 20 million was 19% of total revenue and up 68% year on year and 15% sequentially. Other revenue at 4 million and 4% of total revenue increased 23% year on year, down 12% sequentially. As we've discussed before, subscription revenue growth is tied to the growth in sales of network charging systems. The percentage is heavily dependent upon mix and trails network charging systems growth by one to two quarters due to back and loaded system shipments and the timing of subscription activation. Our deferred revenue, which is future recurring subscription revenue from existing customer commitments and payments, continues to grow, finishing the quarter at 168 million up from 157 million at the end of Q1. Turning to verticals, as you know, we report them from a billings perspective, which approximates the revenue split. Q2 billings percentages were commercial 72%, fleet 14%, residential 13%, and other 1%. Commercial contribution recovered five points from last quarter as demand from retail and workplace customers improved, and our team worked the supply chain constraints in this area well during the quarter. From a geographic perspective, North America Q2 revenue was 84% and Europe was 16%. In the second quarter, Europe delivered 18 million in revenue and grew 254% year over year and 11% sequentially. Turning to gross margin, non-GAAP gross margin for Q2 was 19%, which includes 7 million or six points of purchase price variance logistical costs associated with the supply chain. We expect continued technology-driven margin improvements for our newer products, lower purchase price variances, and improving ASPs to drive recovery in the second half. Despite these challenges, however, we encourage we are encouraged at the improving gross margin fundamentals demonstrated in Q2. Non-GAAP operating expenses for Q1 were 80 million, a year-on-year increase of 50%, and a sequential decrease of 5%. Excluding higher new product introduction costs in Q1, OPEX was sequentially essentially flat as we focus on delivering operating leverage and managing expenses against environmentally driven gross margin challenges. From an operating leverage perspective, we are pleased to see OPEX as a percentage of revenue drop from over 100% in Q1 to 74% in the second quarter. And with our guidance for the year, I'll mention momentarily, we expect a particularly strong finish on this metric, which is key to achieving our stated goal of free cash flow positive by the end of calendar 2024. Stock-based compensation in Q2 was 26.4 million, up from 15.5 million in Q1. As you may remember from last year, we typically do our annual refresh grants in Q2, so there is a stair step there. We would expect to level out in Q3 through Q1 of next year at approximately this Q2 expense level. Looking at cash, we finished the quarter with 472 million in cash and short-term investments. We had approximately 339 million shares outstanding as of July 31, 2022. Turning to guidance, for the third quarter of fiscal 2023, we expect revenue to be 125 to 135 million, up 100% year on year and up 20% sequentially at the midpoint. We are also confirming our annual revenue guidance of 450 to 500 million, annual non-GAAP gross margin guidance range of 22 to 26%, and operating expense guidance of 350 to 370 million. So, in terms of uh, you know what what picked up in the quarter, um, as, as we said in our pre- prepared remarks, uh, we had a very nice performance from uh, the the commercial vertical that uh, had a nice little nice little recovery. It was the one part of the business that lagged the most, relatively speaking, of course, um, during the pandemic. So so it's very, very welcome to see that coming back. Um, and then we just we just had, you know, a very nice performance from the operations teams to bang a product out, to be honest with you. So it was no one thing. Um, you know, it wasn't like we, anything outperformed something else other than the one commercial thing I mentioned. Uh, and so we were, we were able to, to outperform a little bit at the end of the quarter. 
but but again, nothing systemic that I could describe uh, for Q2. So if you look at Q3 and 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 the guidance for the rest of the year, you know I think what we see there is you know, it, we were able to grow from Q4. Well, yeah, a little bit from Q4 to Q1, then nicely from Q1 to Q2. Uh, obviously, you can do the math of Q3 and Q4. Good growth, but not outlandish. Uh, and we think our teams and our supply chains are up to it in, just in terms of, of, of hitting those numbers. And, and clearly, we have a nice backlog uh, backing us up as well. So it's more of a consistent sea ball game right now until the external environment changes, uh, where we just keep, we just keep you know, the pushing the envelope. But you know, the, the, any breakouts that we would, would expect would be a function of the external, the external weather clearing up uh, considerably from where it is today. So hopefully that answers your question. For a 15-year-old company and uh, a lot of people that have worked tirelessly uh, to get to this point, um, uh, I have to say thank you. So to all the charge pointers out there that uh, have, have been really pushing it to scale, as I mentioned uh, in one of the answers, you know, the quarter-over-quarter quarter growth here is an enviable uh, multi-year growth rate for most companies. And the team here feels that, and they've risen to the occasion, and we're really proud of what they're doing. Uh, and we're making the necessary investments, obviously, to, to uh, give them a, uh, an even broader foundation to stand on. So thank you to all the charge pointers out there that are listening. Um, and then I want to thank our customers and our partners. Um, you know, our, our, our customers make this all happen for us. Uh, and they, you know, they trust us. And that's an honor uh, to be trusted by so many companies um, <clears throat> and to, you know, have to um, you know, could have come through for them, uh, especially under very demanding times. So, um, you know, again, uh, a, a large thanks.